Strix. I'm a medical doctor, mental health coach, and clinical hypnotherapist. I've been helping patients with their mental health concerns for over a decade. Today we're going to talk about anxiety. <sighs> you know what it's like. You're uneasy, apprehensive, tense, nervous, agitated. It's interfered with your sleep. You are anywhere from like crazy agitated to restless to almost immobilized and you get cold sweats and uh, an uncomfortable feeling in your hands and feet. You might be short of breath, might have your heart raising, might have palpitations. Basically, uh, the symptoms of a hyper excited nervous system. You might be having a dry mouth, you might be nauseous, your body muscles, joints might be aching and tense, and you might have dizzy spells. If you've ever been super frightened and unable to move, and you extend this feeling over a long period of time, you know what it's like to have anxiety. Earmarks to anxiety include an uneasiness and apprehensiveness, meaning you're not comfortable and that discomfort keeps you from doing things that you know you should be doing. And you have compulsive behavior, meaning you end up doing things you know you shouldn't have to do or you're unable to stop yourself from doing things which you know aren't useful or may in fact be destructive or counterproductive for you. You have panic attacks of some sort. In an extreme, in its extreme forms, it'll tend to be something that interferes with daily life and will last more than six months. You'll hear synonyms or sound likes and varieties in the form of panic attacks, social anxiety disorder, phobias, and generalized anxiety disorders. In my area alone, where I'm surrounded at the clinic by three adjacent schools, You may not consider how impactful anxiety is, but anxiety, just for my area, tends to progress into depression, tends to lead to school dropouts, and you can see how school dropouts uh, or dropping out of school can result from and can lead to depression. Uh, you can also have relationship concerns breakups, relationships gone sour or bad, suicides. And these go along a chain that reinforce themselves. Anxiety, you might say, can give you depression. Depression can lead to suicide. Anxiety on its own can force people into suicide with just a train track of thinking. If you think about the global burden you're looking at about 40 million people affected per year with one in every four people on planet earth somewhere during their lifetime being affected by some form of anxiety on a clinical scale the burden tunes to 42 billion us dollars in cost for taking care of this per year the spectrum of it if you look at how how do we help you might look at a spectrum that includes fear a standard stress response and unjustified anxiety let's look at that again if we're aiming to help it helps to understand there seems to be a range there's fear a response to stress and uh, 
an unwarranted or unjustified anxiety. And this is a range I'm putting together, making up, just so you have an understanding of it. Okay, It's truly more fluid in actual practice. Fear, a stress response, and unwarranted anxiety. Fear, fear will get you out of a fire. Fear is useful. It gets your heart racing, it, it gets your cardiovascular system working in a way that gets you out of a fire, that gets you out of danger. A stress response, like in work or relationships, like in daily living, gets you on top of things. Now, it's when an unwarranted response to triggers, you might say. It's when you have an over-response to things which might give just minor anxiety to most people. When these effects are magnified over an over an extended period of time it's when we say we have anxiety now most people can find some way of cope and you might like to think of it along that scale where the better you cope the less anxious you feel let's extend that if we're trying to help it helps to understand that the more you or those you love can get a feeling of control somewhere in their lives or even just the general notion that things will go well anxiety tends to drop better feeling of control less anxiety and even the notion of do it first do it badly do it bit by bit helps in the doing of it and this overcomes apprehension even if you do it badly that relieves the pressure just starting gets a little bit done and this lowers the level of anxiety let's take something else forgiveness or being kinder to ourselves or to others this too drops anxiety it, it removes some of the importance and the overthinking that surrounds this and drops the level of anxiety having a deep why a purpose of meaning to life even a sharing of burden or a sense of extending what you're doing into a legacy thing this too by you might say having something more important to do than over worrying <laughs> relieves anxiety it's like in the frankelian sense if you have a strong enough why you can bear any how and you might extend it into a frankelian einsteinian sense of if you consider life to be a friendly place you might consider that life is still expecting something of you or that somehow things pan out well and in the end things work out all right and if you consider that general notion that overall somehow things kind of work out this too decreases anxiety now there are things which on top of these notions you might think of those as frames or meta frames or um, states of mind to gear to that help with anxiety other things which might help include cognitive behavioral therapy and hypnotherapy they overlap cognitive behavioral therapy and hypnotherapy overlap in the they help you become aware of when you become anxious and help you somehow manage that anxiety hypnotherapy seems to help with with getting to a state that helps thwart or overcome or control anxiety and with having a state in which suggestion or the giving of commands or suggestions which help anxiety this becomes available so it helps with state helps with suggestions and a great way in to try out if hypnotherapy might work for you is to try a group hypnotherapy session in which you're in a safe environment among people who know how to handle your concerns and it's kind of like you're in a journey with other people 
who are on the same journey or same bus or same boat as you at varying stages and some of them actually unwinding or getting out of anxiety so they know where you've been and from this kind of group mind or hive mind you tend to gather ideas and ways of coping and ways of understanding that give you like ahas and insights which really do change the game for anxiety so this is something for you to consider group hypnotherapy for anxiety let us know if you're interested cheers